I'm gonna hold your hand throughout the making of this After Effects composition. And I'll be showing the most efficient way to get it done. But there's a specific way to get this animation, and in fact, any animation that you do in After Effects, go from this to this. That is pretty crazy, not gonna lie. We're gonna do this with some effects applied in a special way. And this trick is, in my opinion, absolutely essential to making any animation stand out from all the other stuff that you see on the internet. And before we start, make sure you go to the hardware store and you buy yourself a new graphic card, CPU, and the RAM, because this is absolutely gonna kill your computer. So this is what I got so far, but I'm gonna delete absolutely everything. We're gonna start over. Have your clips ready in Premiere Pro. I've already put them next to each other, but in a normal video, you'd have them cut up in between other clips. So I'm gonna replace with After Effects composition. And then I've already made folders for sorting out everything. So I'm gonna put this into assets and this into comps. I'll rename it, enter and one. Press L twice to open up the audio. I'll make markers on each point and then also I'll number them. Part one, how to balance deep work. Part two, how do we get videos done? If you actually want me to release this video, leave a comment. Now that I've sorted everything, I'm gonna create a new solid and then the animation begins. So I'm gonna call this background VG. I'll add in, by the way, I press control and enter. This is a plugin called, oh, I forgot the name of the plugin. So gradient ramp and we'll apply gradient ramp, but we don't actually want a gradient ramp. We want a radial ramp. Put the middle in the middle, extend this out a little bit. I'll change the white to a darker black. So we have a little gradient. And then we need a grid. The grid is gonna be our main part of the composition. So we'll apply an effect called grid to it. And then we'll do width slider. And make sure you lined up the squares on the top. The squares on the side don't actually matter because we'll be animating them with the anchor point. So set a keyframe on the anchor, press U to see the keyframes, and then go all the way to the end of the composition and move this axis. Part one, how to balance deep work and going out. To be honest, that's kind of slow, so I'll do a bit more. Now that we made the grid, we can nest it. <laughs> bro, the ambulance walking, bro, it's ruining my. Am I even record? Uh, so. Hey, yo, pre compose the grid. And now, if we make it into a 3D layer, we turn on the title and the action save. I press R, rotate this 90 degrees. Oh shit, wrong axis. Rotate this 90 degrees, scale it down. Then we duplicate this, and we have another one. This one, we're gonna rotate, and we're gonna go and look at two views. We need the custom view, so select side view here left so these lines represent these but from the side so first off this i want this to be straight so i'm gonna make it 270 degrees then i'm gonna line this up in the middle with the other one this one move it down hold shift and then move it down so we don't move it to the sides accidentally and just kind of try to connect them i don't know a better way to do this if you know a better way to do this leave it in the comments i don't actually care right now this works so i'm gonna stick with this here we go this is nicely connected and now if you if we look you know what it's not nicely connected we might need to change that now once we've lined this up we create a new null object we select these two we link them to the null object null object is going to be 3d scale position and now you can do whatever you want i want this to be like a floor so it's going to be lower than the top one this is going to be our base for the composition. Look, look at this. It's so perfect. Now we'll be applying the effect. So we're going to be applying gradient ramp on the first one. Change the start of ramp up here and the ramp down here. And then I'll make the colors. There we go. I'll copy it and put it on the other one as well. Now, what we're going to be doing is creating a new text. Here we're going to put the title of our composition. I'm going to write deep work. Create a new shape layer. Go to the pen tool. You can either click G or just go to the pen tool. Make sure you have a stroke and a fill. If the fill is enabled, right, if you have a fill here, you just hold Alt, click on it until it disappears. And then stroke, the same thing, right? This is going to be our first point, second point here. Boom. Maybe I'll move it up a little bit. I'll make the stroke a little smaller, maybe about four pixels. Then we go into contents, shape one, stroke. We're going to taper this because it looks goofy as hell. It looks default. We don't want that. We're going to do 100% on start length and then a little bit more like 30% on the end. Boom. Now we have a nice line. And to actually make the line bendy and look good, it took me about a year to discover this until I watched the course. Click on this, hold the pen tool, go onto the convert vertex tool. Boom. You click on this and then move look how crazy this is. And then hold shift if you want to lock it in. Boom. Do it on the other side as well. Hold shift. Now I'm going to be edit a trim path so I can animate it in. We're going to be animating the end. Put it down here. Zero boom apply a keyframe to it i'll be using flow for this keyframe is going to be looking like this and then boom part one how to balance and you make it smaller so hold alt click on the end to shorten or lengthen the animation part one how to balance deep work. there we go we got the first one and we duplicate it go right click transform flip horizontal we got two animations now and we're going to duplicate it once again and then go here contents shape one path and then we're going to be changing the path to be straight I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but this is the way I do it. I might want to make these lines a bit longer. I don't actually like how they look. But now that I've made the change to one, I'm going to need to delete all of them. And I'm going to have to duplicate it. Flip horizontal. That looks goofy as hell. I'll take that back. There we go. Beautiful. Now, now that we have our lines, we're going to need to make them 3D. I'm going to nest them. 
colored lines. If we look into the 3D, hey, yo. Now, if we look here, they're stuck to the plane. I want them to have some parallax effect. So I'll go two views, we'll be on the side. Select them both and then use this gizmo to move them forward a little bit. And now we've got a nice parallax effect. And now what is next is we do the Element 3D. So you're gonna need Element 3D plugin. You can go buy it on their website. I'm not gonna make a tutorial on that. If you're watching this, you should probably know how to install plugins. And then we make a new solid. I'll name it 3D1 because we'll have three instances of Element 3D. We'll apply the effect and you should have your assets ready before you do this or you can do them while you're doing this so you go to import i'll be importing my assets that i already made so i've got a book and a bottle of jack daniels now i need to texture them so top of the bottle i'm gonna speed run this because you probably have some completely different models so this doesn't matter obviously you know deep work book i've imported it and it looks four by three stretch like you used to play counter strike we're gonna uv repeat and stretch it. In fact, I'm gonna go in the minus coordinates because it's the other way around. Right, this doesn't matter too much. We're not trying to be perfect. First model done. I don't actually care about placing my model, so I'm gonna disable it. Create a new solid. It's also gonna be 3D, but this guy is gonna be 3D too. Apply element to it. I'm gonna apply the textures to my next model. Windows 95 screen. There we go. Loaded the computer in. I'm gonna disable that once again. Create the last instance of element 3D. This one is gonna. Bro, what am I doing? This one's gonna be a butterfly. So I've enabled draw back faces on this butterfly because on the top we can see it, but if we go on the bottom, it just disappears. So we need to have this enabled. If you want these 3D models, I'm gonna link them in the description if you wanna recreate this tutorial exactly. These are not my 3D models. There we go, we have the butterfly. Now we can enable one at a time. We'll start with this. So we go to group one, create group null, and then we create the group null. I'm gonna rename this to 3D1. And now with this null, we can grab it from the middle or just use the gizmo to move our object around. So I press S, P, and then R, shift R. But if you look to the side, it's all messed up. So we're gonna go into two views, make this look good from the side. And now we do the second one. We do the same thing for each one. I'm gonna speed up this part because you've already seen it. Now that I've set them up, I'm looking at it from the side, it looks good, but they are quite big, so I'm going to need to scale them down. Press S on each one, select them all, and then scale them at the same time. Then I'll select the position on them and move them up all at the same time. And generally, I'd like this composition to be a bit more spread out, so I'll move everything up. I'm going to be scaling the lines by unlocking the scale and then moving it down so that they're more stretched. Now that this is all set up, we're going to create a new camera. So, new camera and then we select a two node camera no one told me this when i started it but a one node camera is a camera which is freely moving around a two node camera is a camera which is a point around which it rotates and moves so we're gonna select a two node camera that's what we need here let's change the focal length to about nine this looks kind of trippy so it's a bit different as you can see from the last animation because here i didn't actually use the camera i used a null object to zoom in on everything uh, this time i want to do it a little bit different what i did here is way easier but for some reason this jack daniels is looking kind of pixelated so okay it's because of the point of interest a bit too high so we'll bring it down that's my bad make sure we fix this yeah now it's better and then we can animate the point of interest to start up here and then it goes down there we go everything's looking way better so now we're gonna be applying the special sauce First off, we'll be animating each element to come in at their appropriate time. So this is very simple to do, actually. We'll be using the 3D nulls. Press R, Shift, S. Make a keyframe for the scale. Make a keyframe for the Y rotation. I'll select them all, bring them up here. Scale is going to be zero to start. Boom. Y rotation, minus 230. There we go. They're all animated, but they're doing it at the same time, which I don't want. So I'm going to delay them. 3D null 1 is going to come at the start. 3D null 2 is going to be here. And then the third one is going to be here. So now they're going to appear at their appropriate time. There we go. But as you can see, the deep work title isn't animated. So we'll need to animate deep work. The way we're going to do this is right click on the text, create shapes from text. And this has turned the text into shapes, which we can edit. We can literally edit the path. And this is good because now I'm going to go into transform position opacity. Bring this here. Position is going to be down, opacity is zero. And then I'm going to make the opacity come in a bit later. Position right at the start. So this is how it looks. Opacity here, position right at the start boom part one. Oh shit and then the letters are gonna be coming in one by one here we go then we copy this and then select all the other letters Control v and then the keyframes are applied on each one then we press u while selecting this whole thing go down select all the keyframes and we're gonna need to displace them i'm gonna use a plugin called motion tools it's actually free you can go get it from after effects scripts i think it's called i'll leave it in the description amount five you can do this manually but it's gonna take just a little bit longer there we go we've animated the text now but if you look at the example of how we started it doesn't look exactly the same. 
this is very glowy nice and bright colors so this is where the sauce comes in this is how you make everything look absolutely beautiful i know you've been waiting for this part so we're gonna apply two main effects number one is gonna be deep glow if you don't have deep glow because it's a paid plugin you can just apply i think normal glow you might have to mess with the settings a little bit more but it's, it still works but we'll be using deep glow if you don't have it i don't care then we'll be applying a curves effect and you're gonna adjust the curves so that everything is visible but at the same time it looks beautiful colors pop out more but right now this looks perfect so we do this for all the objects we apply deep glow and curves to it with curves, I don't think I can actually give a proper tutorial step by step because every time you're going to need a different curve for each object. But if I give you a little tip, is just start here at the top, move it and see what it does to the object. This is usually the more brighter colors and this is the darker colors that you're adjusting. Absolutely beautiful. Then we apply deep glow to the butterfly. But you thought I was done. No, no, I'm not done. I'm going to show you another thing that I do to make the compositions look different from everybody else. Don't worry, I've got my sauce. We're going to apply CC lens. And so this can give a, a bigger field of view if your camera settings are not already doing that. Actually, I don't think we need this. Or if we do, it's going to be very subtle. I'm going to leave it like this. And then we add a film grain. Boom. Now this film grain is going to make it look like a drawing. You can either apply BCC film grain or you can apply ultra grain by Sapphire plugins if you have that. I'm going to have it in mono. No blur. Absolutely beautiful. Now you've got your objects set up. You know how to move the camera. I'm not gonna, actually going to move it for this video because you can just apply keyframes, whatever. You can do this, do this. And then every time a new object pops up, you zoom the camera in on it. Like you can do literally whatever you want. I'll just show you an example real quick so that you know what to do. Boom. The object comes in. Boom. You zoom in on it. Very easy. You can do this yourself. I don't need to show you. What I'm going to show you though is how to make the objects float in space like a Minecraft item when you drop it on the floor. You're going to go into the group null position. If you've already animated the position, you create can create another null just like this. And then you can link this null to that null. But I haven't animated the position. So I'm going to do one keyframe, go a little bit further and then move it down just a slight bit. I'm going to go a bit further. I'm going to move it up and then we apply some keyframes to it. Make it nice and smooth. Obviously, you might miscalculate. So you're going to need to select them all, hold alt and then make them animations shorter or longer. And then once you've done that, you can control copy and then paste it once again. Not going to lie, it looks a little bit goofy. So we might need to change some things. I'm going to line all of these keyframes up. There we go. So the keyframes shouldn't be too extreme. So they should kind of peak in the middle and blend into each other just like this. This is obviously not a perfect example, but if you want to do this yourself, you can kind of follow the same. We're going to remake the keyframes for the other animations. But what we're going to copy is the actual movement of the keyframes. I'm going to use this plugin to do that. Now you understand how to do this, so I'm just going to speedrun this and then I'll show you the end result. There we go. All the items are now shaking, but they're at the same time, they're quite still. We want them to spin around. So I'm going to be spinning them around. Select all the group nodes, rotation, and I'll make them slowly rotate as they go along. There we go, we've animated the objects now. And now what is left is to apply a couple effects on the text and the lines. So our text deep work is going to get a gradient ramp. That was the wrong one. Gradient ramp on the text. Boom. I'm going to disable these mask lines so I can see what I'm doing. One side blue and then the other side is going to be more pink. And then we apply a deep glow. Absolutely beautiful. Then we do deep glow on the lines. But here's the problem. We apply deep glow and it only glows the inside of the box, right? We don't want that. So we're going to nest the grid. So we're going to leave all the attributes here and we're going to do that to the other one as well. How we're going to expand this is we're going to go inside the composition, control K, lock aspect ratio. I'm going to change the resolution to like 3140. So this is bigger. I'll do that to the other one as well. And now if we apply deep glow to it, it's actually going to spread out. Now I'm assuming that you've already animated everything and you've made everything look perfect. Once you've done all of that, go on and change the render settings in the element 3D. But this is going to lag your computer a lot. So make sure you do all the movements, do everything, and then you apply the deep glow, you apply all the all these post effects. And the last, last thing you do before you render, output, and you go into super sampling, you set it to max. If your computer can handle it, obviously, you can go a bit lower if you don't. And then you enable enhanced multi-sampling. This is going to make everything look very smooth, and you're not going to be seeing many problems with anti-aliasing and pixelation and all that. So we do that to all of them. Now our objects look beautiful, they move very smoothly, and they glow. But one thing that I'm noticing on this composition, it's a bit too bright. So on this adjustment layer, which I'm going to call master, I'll be applying a curves effect just to adjust the composition overall in the way it looks. And that's it. Our composition is done. You can render this, send it out to your clients. I'm sure that if you do this for any client, they're going to be more than happy, pay you more. Hope you got value from this video. Bye bye.